Hi everyone, welcome back to A207 Data Communications and Networking. We are now at Chapter 4, and in this chapter we discuss inter-networking. My name is Nuruddin, and with me is our A207 student, Matthew Tan. Hey everyone! By the end of the last chapter, we established that the switch and a router form the beating heart of any network. The switch regulates and manages data flow within the network, and the router is in charge of moving data across internal subnets, and also in moving data across the internet. Do you remember how, Matthew? A router is needed to move data between networks? Correct. But in addition, a router will send data from one network to another right until it reaches its destination, and in the process of network hopping, the data can go right across the internet. Hosts and networks do not normally operate in isolation. We use connecting devices to connect hosts together to make a network, or to connect networks together to make an internet. Connecting devices can operate in different layers of the internet model. We discuss three kinds of connecting devices, hubs, link layer switches, and routers. A hub is a device that operates only in the physical layer. Signals that carry information within a network can travel a fixed distance before attenuation endangers the integrity of the data. A repeater receives a signal and, before it becomes too weak or corrupted, regenerates and retimes the original bit pattern. A bridge divides a large network into a smaller segment, thus isolating and controlling the link problems, example, congestion. A bridge regenerates the signal, checks the physical address and forwards only to the specified segment. A link layer switch, or just a switch, operates in both the physical and the data link layers. As a physical layer device, it regenerates the signal it receives. As a link layer device, the link layer switch can check the MAC address, source and destination, contained in the frame. A router is a layer 3 device. It operates in the physical, data link and network layers. A network is a set of connected devices. Whenever we have multiple devices, we have the problem of how to connect them to make one-to-one -one communication possible. The solution is switching. A switched network consists of a series of interlinked nodes called switches. Traditionally, three methods of switching have been discussed. Circuit switching, packet switching, and message switching. The first two are commonly used today. The third has been phased out in general communications, but still has applications. Packet switching can further be divided into two subcategories, virtual circuits approach and datagram approach. Switching can happen at several layers of the TCP IP protocol suite, at the physical layer, at the data link layer, and at the network layer. A circuit switched network consists of a set of switches connected by physical links. A connection between two stations is a dedicated path made of one or more links. However, each connection uses only one dedicated channel on each link. If the message is going to pass through a packet-switched network, it needs to be divided into packets of fixed or variable size. The size of the packets is determined by the network and the governing protocol. The actual communication in a circuit-switched network requires three phases. Connection setup, data transfer, and connection teardown. It can be argued that circuit-switched networks are not as efficient as the other two types of networks, because resources are allocated during the entire duration of the connection. These resources are unavailable to other connections. In a telephone network, people normally terminate the communication when they have finished their conversation. Although a circuit-switched network normally has low efficiency, the delay in this type of network is minimal. During data transfer, the data is not delayed at each switch, the resources allocated for the duration for the connection. In a datagram network, each packet is treated independently of all the others. Even if a packet is part of a multi-packet transmission, the network treats it as though it existed alone. Packets in this approach are referred to as datagrams. The network layer in version 4 can be thought of as one main protocol and three auxiliary ones. The main protocol, Internet Protocol version 4 IPv4, is responsible for packetizing, forwarding, and delivery of a data packet. The data link layer needs to pack bits into frames so that each frame is distinguishable from another. Our postal system practices a type of framing. The simple act of inserting a letter into 
an envelope separates one piece of information from another. The envelope serves as the delimiter. Framing in the data link layer separates a message from one source to a destination by adding a sender address and a destination address. The destination address defines where the packet is to go. The sender address helps the recipient acknowledge the receipt. Now, what have we learned? We saw how a hub, a bridge, a switch, and a router operate. We also went into the types of networks and how data passes through each one. Finally, we went through how a router actually works in sending data within its own network and outwards to other networks. This ends our discussion on internet working. Remember to post any questions onto Google Classroom. Work hard, work smart, work your way to your dreams.